In this video, I'm going to show step-by-step -step how to build a Rag AI agent on Slack that could auto-respond to any of your queries. Whether as a team assistant agent, for example, in social media or content team, or HR FAQ agent, or a legal advisor agent. This AI RAG agent will be able to reference the latest and most accurate in-house documents that you've uploaded into the NADN workflow. If this sounds interesting to you, let's dive right in. So going into NADN, depending on whether you have your company Slack account set up, you wanna go into Slack and either sign up or sign in just to make sure that you have access to your Slack account management or admin access as well. But assuming you have a Slack team environment set up, what you wanna do here is to go to your Slack node. Just hit plus sign here. So Slack, and we're gonna do an onboard app mention trigger here. And what you wanna do first is of course, create a new credential. And once you click on that, there are a couple of fields to configure here. So where you wanna go is go over to api.slack.com slash apps. And if you're already signed into your Slack account, your dashboard is probably gonna look like this. Or if somebody has already created an app, you'll be able to see the list of created apps. But in this case, I'm gonna hit create app and I'm gonna click create from scratch. I'm gonna name this and then in this case, I'm gonna build a HR bot. So I'm gonna feed it some HR policy documents and stuff like that so that team members can actually ask the HR bot, hey, what are my leave policies? What are my expense policies and stuff like that, right? So we're gonna pick a workspace here. We're gonna hit ABC company, which is the fictitious company that I've set up. I'm gonna create an app. Cool, and once I'm in, what I wanna do, I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna go over to OAuth and permissions and I'm gonna scroll down all the way to bot token scopes. And the list for the scopes are really long, but there are only a couple ones that I wanna add, which are essential in my use case. And those are app mentions read. So this basically allows your bot to read messages within the Slack environment. And the second one is chat write, which is to be able to send message as the bot. And we're gonna also chat write public just so that it could send messages to channels that it hasn't been invited to. And to give it context, I wanna add the, sorry, history scopes, which is the channel history, the group history, and the IM history. And the reason why I'm adding all these history scopes is because I wanted to have some context as to the conversational threats that has happened within the channel or within a group and just so that it could read the username and stuff like that and some of the basic profile information, we wanna add users read, All right? So some of these scopes are not completely essential and they are optional, but the first two are the ones that are essential if you want it to be able to listen to an app mention event and to respond in text. And once that's done, I'm gonna hit install to ABC company at the top here. As you can see, you're gonna need an admin access to be able to install this bot. So just make sure you have that access. Or if you don't, just reach out to people who are the admins to grant you those access. So now it's installed. Now you have the bot user OAuth token. I'm gonna to hit copy. I'm gonna go back to my workflow automation here and we're gonna paste the OAuth token. And for the signature secret, we wanna go back to Slack API page. And on the top left-hand corner here, you'll see that there is basic information on the settings. So we're gonna click on that and basically find the signing secret here. So I'm gonna show and just copy the whole thing and go back to our workflow credential setup and paste that in and hit save. All right, so the green bar shows up. So connection has been tested successfully. So we're good to go. Now heading back to the API page because we're not quite done just yet. We wanna to go to event subscription because Right now, we have set up all the permissions in terms of scopes of what the bots can do within the work environment or within your workspace. But what you wanna do now is to make sure that it's listening to the events that you've set up. So in this case, we wanna to toggle on the enable events. As you can see, there is a request URL. So where you're gonna get this is you wanna go back to the workflow on end to end. And on your Slack trigger node, just unfurl the webhook URLs. And you've got two URLs here, the test URL and production URL. So the test URL is basically just on the manual test runs. So we're gonna do that because this is a manual test run. But once you publish the app or publish the workflow, you wanna toggle this to production URL and replace that on your Slack API. <clears throat> so we're gonna copy that again and go back here and paste the request URL. And 
you see it's verifying and it says that your URL didn't respond with the value of the challenge parameter. So what happened here is that when they send the post request to this particular URL, basically like a test message to that particular trigger node, and it's not responding with anything at all because we haven't activated anything here. So what we want to do is essentially activate this node by hitting execute step, but I can't do that right now because there's no channel selected. So I'm going to do that. And as you can see, it's not loading any channel list. So this is happening because I missed out a scope within the Slack API. So we're going to head back to Slack API here and we're going to go back to OAuth and permissions and scroll down to the scopes here. We're going to add an OAuth scope, which is channel read so that it could actually read the list of channels. And just in case, I've also added the group read. So this allows the bot to view basic information about private channels because some of these channels are not public channels and might be private channels. So make sure that you add groups read and channels read in order for the Slack node to be able to see the list of channels that you're in. And I'm going to, as you can see, there's a yellow bar that shows up here. It says, well, I've changed my permission scopes. So I have to reinstall my app and just click on that. And I'm going to reinstall it. All right, so that's good for now. So we're going to head back to our Slack trigger here. We're going to hit the channels to watch. And now I'm able to see all the lists of channels that I have. So in this case, actually, I'm going to go back here to my Slack workspace. And again, as you can see, this is a new workspace that I've created just for this demo. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new channel. I'm going to call it, so I'm going to choose blank channel. I'm going to call it HR queries and keep it as a public channel. All right. I'm going to add all members. So as you can see, there are only two members here. And so both are me with two slightly different names. And before I hit the execute step, what I want to do is I want to again unfurl my webhook URLs and take the test URL here, copy that, go back to my Slack API and head over to event subscriptions here on the left-hand side. And this is a page that you're going to be led to. And I'm going to toggle that on. I'm going to paste my request URL here. Again, the same error message shows up, which is your URL to respond with the value of the challenge parameter. So this time, I'm going to hit execute step. And I'm going to hit retry. And there we go, it says verified. Cool, all right, so just before we go, we want to add a bot user event so that it could actually subscribe to a particular event, like listen in to whenever it's mentioned within the channel or a conversation. So I'm going to add app mention here. And we're going to hit save changes. So going back to the channel here, what we need to do next is to add the bot into the channel because that's how it's going to be able to listen into the conversations that's happening within the channel. So we can do that in a few different ways, but what I like to do here is just to ping it, edit n dash hr dash bot. I'm going to hit send. And as you can see, when I hit send, it says that it's not in the channel. Do you want to add the app into the channel? So I'm going to add that to the channel, and there we go. We already have the bot within the channel. Okay, so now I'm just going to head back to my workflow here, and I'm going to hit execute step again because it's going to start listening into the channel events. And I'm going to go back to my Slack channel here, and I'm going to just ping it and say, hello there. Okay, I'm going to hit send. Okay, go back to my workflow, and as you can see, the node is receiving an input from the bot with, let me toggle this to schema, with the text, hello there, and a couple of other inputs as well with the username, the timestamp, all the data that's associated to the message as well as the channel ID, for example. All right, cool. So now we're receiving the select trigger. The next thing what we want to do is we're going to go to an AI agent node. And in this case, we want to choose the find below because we want to drag the text from the previous node, which is this one. So I'm going to just drag it here. So this is going to be the user message. And I'm not going to just do any system prompt just yet, but I'm going to include the chat model, which is in this case, I'm going to choose open AI, pick the right account and GPT 4.1 mini is good enough for me. And as for memory, I want to make sure that I'm attaching a simple memory with the appropriate window context length. So for the session key, usually I'm just going to drag the channel ID and put it there. And as for the context length, I want it to be slightly longer. I'm going to choose 15. All right. And then as for the tool now, 
This is where it gets interesting because we want this to be a rag agent, which is a retrieval augmented generation, which is just a fancy way of saying, hey, we want this AI agent to have additional context on information that is outside of its training, right? So for example, in this particular scenario, the information that we're going to include is the HR policies of the particular company because we want it to refer to that particular company's, in this case, ABC company's HR policies when it's answering user queries, right? So of course, there's a couple of ways where you can set up this contextual knowledge database. And there's a vector database with tools like Pinecone vector database or Superbase. But in this case, because I just want to keep it simple for this particular example, I'm going to have another video where I'm going to explain how you can set up, you know, Pinecone vector DB, for example, for a use case like this. But we're going to just use Google Docs. And this is the Google Docs tool that I'm going to attach to the AI agent. And for those of you who haven't connected your Google Docs to your n to n workflow and you want to know how to do that, I have a separate video where I go through a step-by-step -step on how to do that. So I'll link it somewhere up here and down here. So essentially here, what I want to do is I want to attach it to a HR policy document. And I have actually created a fictitious HR policy guidebook for ABC company. And this is just ChatGP generated, but it's got some pretty specific information about, you know, probation period, about leave policies, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to leave it in here because the point is I want to test out whether the agent is going to extract the correct or accurate information from this particular HR policy guidebook, right? So I'm going to head back to my workflow now. So I'm going to leave everything else the same here, resources, document, operation. We're going to change that to get because we're not creating any documents. We're getting actually the document that we want from here, right? So dog ID or URL, well, right now we only have one document that we want it to refer to. Of course, when you have multiple documents, it's going to look different. And again, like I said, I think the best and most efficient way to do this is to have everything in a VEX database. Of course, that's just the most effective method of retrieval for AI agents. And I'll explain why in a separate video too. But in this case, we're going to start with the Google Docs and we want the ID of the Google Docs or the URL. So in this case, I'm going to just hit the URL here because I have it right here and go back to the workflow. I'm going to paste the entire URL. All right. So I'm going to toggle out and under the AI agent, remember I haven't set any system message. So in this case, I'm going to give it a simple system message. I'm going to say you are a HR policy agent. Your job is to respond to user queries who are team members of ABC company. So this is going to be an internal bot, so to speak, right? But of course this could be external as well. When it comes to customer support agent, for example, you can feed it some customer FAQ documents and it can respond to external users and customers as well, right? But in this case, we're going to say that these are team members. We're going to ask those questions and I'm going to say with accurate HR policy responses, please. I want to add, do not hallucinate if you don't know the answer definitively. And again, I'm not the most effective prompt engineer. You can obviously feed this into GPT or whatever to give you a better prompt. So I'm going to add a tool here. Use the Google Doc to attach to refer to the latest HR policy. Cool. I'm just going to give it a simple system prompt like that. All right. I'm going to hit execute step. And when I do that, as you can see, it's not really going into my document or Google Docs tools because basically what I said from the Slack trigger is a mere hello there. So it's not going to dive into the document because it doesn't need that. It's just going to respond back. Hello, how can I assist you with your HR policy questions today? All right. So again, this is all just happening on the NADN workflow. So we need to connect that back to the Slack channel, right? Because we want to communicate with it on the Slack channel. So we're going to do a send message on Slack. All right. So there are two things that we want to configure here is the first is send message to channel, right? And now we need to specify which channel we want it to send to. So you can grab it from the list. For example, in this case, HR queries is here. So excellent. But alternatively, sometimes the list doesn't load, especially if you have a bunch of channels. So what you want to do is maybe go by ID and how you can grab that is go back to your Slack channel and click on the profile of the channel and just scroll down. And so you can see here at the bottom, there's a channel ID. You can copy that channel ID, go back to your workflow and, and paste that in. I'm just going to delete this. I think it's the same. Let's see. 
it's different. Okay, so that's the channel ID that I for a message that I want to send through would just be the output of the AI agent. I'm going to direct that and simply drop it down here. And I'm going to hit execute step. And as you can see, it's sending over something. So let's go back to our channel. It says, hello, how can I assist you with your HR policy questions today? And it also has the automated with this and it end workflow. So I want to remove that. So what we're going to choose is include link to workflow. And we're going to toggle that off and hit execute step again and go back. And as you can see now, it doesn't have the automated with this and it end workflow attribution here. So now it can respond to you on the channel, whenever you actually mention it. So in this case, I want to start running the workflow and asking it some HR policy questions and see if you can go into the document and give me the accurate answer, right? So, so I'm going to add and it end dash HR bot. How many leaves do I have in the year? All right. So let's ask it that Back to my workflow. So you can see it's re receiving the message, the query, and it's going into the document. Oh, there is some error here. So let's dive into that and see what's going on. Forbidden, perhaps check your credentials. Okay. So this is an account issue. Okay. So now that's fixed. Let's rerun the flow again. So I'm going to ask it the same question. As you can see, it's actually, we're able to tell me that there was some issue in terms of the access. So we're going to ask same thing. All right, go back to our workflow here. And it was receiving the query, going into the document. This time it's successfully accessing the document, getting the right information, sending it back to my Slack channel, right? So at ABC company, the annual leave entitlement for full-time employees is 18 days per calendar per year accrued monthly. Additionally, you may carry forward five unused annual leave. So let's go back to our policy document here and see if it's correct. And it is 18 days, five unused carried over. Okay. So that's pretty accurate. So let's ask it another one. Let's ask it something pertaining to the probation period, but I'm going to word it pretty vaguely. So what is my notice period during my probation window? Okay. So we're going to ask it that, but just before I do that, I'm going to hit execute workflow so that I can start listening. I'm going to hit enter, go back to my workflow. And so you can see it's getting the message going to the agent. Agent goes into the document database and sending back the response. During your probation period, which lasts three months, either you or the employer can end employment within one week notice period, which is correct here. So there you go. As you can see, it is successfully retrieving the accurate information from the existing database or the accurate database that we have. And of course, you know, HR can then come in to the document and update this document as and when they need. So that way the AI agent will always be able to give you the most accurate HR answers or the most up-to-date HR answers to the team members. Now, of course, this is only one use case that could be used in the internal team, but this can be replicated for a external facing customer support agent or even a legal advisor agent internally. Or if you wanted to extract an invoice, for example, from a database, you know, for accounting purposes, for the finance team, you want to find a certain invoice, you want the agent to go into database, find certain invoices that can be set up as well. But like I said, there is a more sophisticated way to set the databases up, you know, using vector database. And we're going to cover that in a separate video. But for now, I just wanted to show how we can plug this all in into a Slack channel, into a Slack workspace so that you can start working with it and just having fun with it. All right. So I hope that's helpful. If you're having any issues in any part of the field, please let me know. And I'll try to respond to that as soon as I can. I'm also going to share the free template of the workflow that I built today so that you can just download it and start using it too. So I'm going to link it down below. But as usual, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. And let me know if you have any other ideas in terms of what kind of workflow you'd like to see me build. And I'll see you in the next one.